the palace. That Hananiah, one of the brethren, came he and certain men of Judah and asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity concerning Jerusalem. They said unto him, unto me, the remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The walls, of, the wall of Jerusalem also was broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. In chapter 2, start reading again in verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass in the month Nisan, in the 20th year, that our Taxrius, I, I can't hardly pronounce that name, uh, uh, the king that wine was before him, and I took the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been there before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad? Sin, thou art not sick. This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. Said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said uh, to me, For what dost thou make us request? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if the servant have found favor in thy sight, that thou wouldest send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, uh, the queen also sitting by him, How long shall thy journey be? And when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I sent Set him a time. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given uh, me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come unto Judah. And, the, and a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the, of the palace which uh, appertaineth to the house and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into and the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Thank you for standing for the reading and uh, I thought uh, like I said I preached for Nehemiah numerous times and uh, but as uh, the Lord laid a thought on my heart this week and uh, I really didn't know which direction to go with it. I just had a, uh, sometimes he lays things on our hearts different, but he just, uh, uh, he simply gave me a title. And, uh, and uh, sometimes when he gives you a title, then you got to search it out. Uh, and, uh, but uh, uh, I thought uh, the Lord just spoke to me the other night and just simply spoke to me, changing the title. And, uh, and they think, well, how in the world did you come with that out of Nehemiah? Uh, but I begin to think about that. And, and, uh, and I thought we've all heard the expression of change in the tide. And, and I thought uh, uh, when you use that term, change in the tide, uh, you're, you change a situation uh, that would be normally bad, and uh, you change it <coughs> dramatically for the good. Uh, and I began to think about that, and I thought uh, uh, there's a lot of situations that simply need to change the tide changed. Uh, and uh, and I thought whenever the tide changes, uh, then it's a dramatic force, if you would. I remember I was probably I don't know 14, 15 year old, and uh, I was uh, probably the second time I'd ever seen the ocean. First time I was probably about. 11 or 12, and we went to uh, Savannah, Georgia. And, uh, we drove down there one day and, and played in the water and then drove back to Macon, where uh, Aunt Ed and them lived. And, and, uh, but we went down there, and uh, we were in uh, 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 Georgia, I mean, and, and uh, I'm sorry, in uh, uh, Virginia. 
and dad and I, uh, we were out playing in the water. And, uh, and uh, I, I'm a pretty good swimmer. And uh, we swam way out. And, uh, and they didn't have no lifeguards on the beach. And he probably remembers it. And uh, we turned around to swim back. And we didn't realize how far we had swam out. Bro, John, the thing was the tide was going out. So we didn't have no problem swimming out. But when we got ready to swim back, I was wore out. And uh, he was wore out. And I think he was about as scared as I was. But then we finally got to where the, my toes had touched the sand. And I could help push myself with my feet. And uh, I was never so glad. And I thought the problem was is that the, what was out there was drawing us, was pulling us. Uh, there was nothing we could do about it. And we were swimming against the very current that was going out. And, and I thought the, a lot of times there's situations that we deal with. And I thought the force that is with us, it seems like there's absolutely nothing that we can do. Because of the, the, the tide, the force that's behind the things that's drawing us. Or, or, or the situations that's surrounding us. And, and I thought, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but all we can change the tide. And uh, I thought, uh, you see here uh, in our text, uh, <coughs> Jeremiah, I mean, I'm sorry, Nehemiah had just uh, uh, just heard some devastating news. Yeah. I mean, here he was, he's in captivity. Uh, he's a cupbearer for the king. Yeah. Uh, it's his job uh, uh, to, to taste all the king's food. And, and, uh, and if somebody had to uh, slip in against the king and try to, uh, to uh, assassinate him through poison, uh, Nehemiah would die first. Uh, that was his job, make sure that uh, nobody didn't come after the king through his uh, uh, through his food, and and so Nehemiah uh, he, he's already under pressure, uh, he's already got a hard job, uh, and then he comes before the king and, and with his uh, with his countenance sad because of the news that he had heard that he, that the that the, uh, the city of his fathers has now laid a waste and destroyed, uh, and it seemed like there was no hope for anything in sight. It seemed like the, the, the devastation was going to overrun everything. Come on now. But then Nehemiah, as he gets a burden for the Lord, for, uh, for, for his city. Now, that, that's the thing that we've got to realize is the burden that Nehemiah had. All these that come in uh, to Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah inquires of them of the things that's taking place. And, and they begin to tell him of the ones that were in captivity and, and the things and, and how that the, uh, the, the affliction and the reproach that is brought against Jerusalem. Uh, we're living in a time whenever there, is a, uh, there has been a great reproach brought against the church. Uh, there has been a great reproach brought against the, uh, Christianity in general. But not only it's up to us to make a difference in the day and hour that we're living in. Now it's tied here tonight. I want to... But uh, <clears throat> but I want, to, I, I want to make a difference. I thought we ought to have a desire to make a difference. Oh, no. <clears throat> I thought, uh, we had Kyle with us this morning, and, and boy, you're all, you're all familiar with him. I mean, he ain't no stranger, and uh, but he's hyper, and uh, he started school this year, and uh, he's uh, they uh, they got an app now. Everything's got an app. He's in school. And uh, I can't remember what it's called, but anyway, they give him uh, dojos. And if he gets a red dojo, then he's acted up. And uh, so we've been working with him, trying to get him. And he went all week long with no records. And he'd come home every day, man, he was psyched up. And, uh, but for some reason, he had it in his mind that he didn't have to go to school Friday. I don't know how he got that. And because he's off tomorrow, I guess. And he knew he had a three-day weekend coming up. So, uh, so he's already upset about having to go to school Friday anyway. He got two of them. And, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, and he came home and he was upset because he got two red dojos. And, and we'd already offered him, told him if he went all week, he'd get a prize. And, and uh, but the thing was, us knowing Kyle and uh, how hard it is and how headstrong he is, we were so excited that he got four days without him, he still got his prize. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but I said all that, you know, uh, but, but the thing about it is at his age and him being a kindergarten, he had to work hard. Brother Danny, he had to apply himself uh, in order to be able to keep. And he was when he got home, he was excited that he had that he had accomplished that, and, and he was so uh, pleased that he had done that. And, and I thought a lot of times uh, we got to realize in order to get anywhere, we have got to apply ourselves, uh, and we've got to dedicate ourselves, and we've got to focus on the things that's necessary. 
necessary in order to get to where we need to get. That's right. I thought uh, his teacher sent a little text message and, and uh, uh, said that uh, she was so excited. I mean, uh, I guess it was just with, at the moon phase. I don't know. Week before last was the full moon. Last week it wasn't. And, and, uh, and she said all of her class got extra recess because they'd all been good. I mean, you know, she was just so excited. And, and, uh, and I thought the, uh, but, but the thing is they had to apply themselves. They had to work, and, 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 and somebody had to put forth an effort to make sure that the things was getting accomplished. And, I mean, this ain't going the way I thought it would, but I thought that in order for us to change the tide of the way the direction is going, sometimes we've got to change ourselves. That's right, man. And I thought that, uh, that's, that's the problem good. a lot of times. We've got ourselves so stinking stuck in the way that God can't even move. Come on. And I thought, I've been there. I've had myself to where that God can't move through me, but I thought if, if we want God to bless us, then we've got to get out of the way so God can. Right. Right. Nehemiah could have looked at the situation and said, well, it's hopeless. Uh, I'm just as in bondage as they are. I'm over here and, and, uh, uh, and there's nothing that I can do. I'm stuck here in the palace waiting on the king. Uh, there, uh, you know, I can't do nothing to help, but Nehemiah got a burden. And I thought we read in the script in the verse 4, it said, to, uh, and it came to pass when I heard the words, he said, I sat down and I wept. You know, it's one thing to cry. And, and there's sometimes we get under a burden and, and, and we cry. But I thought crying a lot of times ain't going to get it done. But what got it done, it says, and I mourn certain days. And then it says, and I fasted and I prayed before the God of heaven. That's what made the difference. Right. Nehemiah realized that the situation that needed to be taken right. care of, he needed the circumstances turned to his good. And when Nehemiah realized that he had to go before God. But so many times we're sitting here saying, you went to wait on me. Oh, God ain't going to wait on none of us. God will move. God will find some way to move, whether he moves through us or whether he don't. Right. But oh, God would like to use us. But oh, we've got to get out. We've got to change the time so that God can. Yes. Oh, well, we've got to be willing to apply ourselves. Yes. Right. And I thought uh, we've been studying in Sunday school the last three weeks, especially <coughs> about Asa and Joash and Hezekiah. Yes, Lord. Yes. And the things that they've done as king. Yes. And uh, and I thought uh, the thing that we've got to realize here is 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 the thing that 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 made them the kings that they was, was they did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And I thought, uh, uh, you know, in, no matter what happened, and, and, you know, and I realized they, they, they had their problems, they failed, and, and, and you know, we've been studying on them, but the fact is, is they did that which was right in the eyes of God. That is what made them the notable kings that they were. Right. That's what made them, gave them the recognition. It's because they desired. I thought, we may stumble, we may fall. But if we have a desire to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord, we can change the situations around us. Yeah. We might not change all the circumstance around us, but we can change what's affecting us directly. Right. How about the, uh, it, was a, it was a burden upon Nehemiah. When he realized that the walls was broken down and, and all the things that was going on, that the, that the enemy just had free course, if you would, to come and go as they pleased. I thought that's a, that's a devastating thing to Nehemiah. Yeah. But I thought he was willing to do what was necessary to change the tide. I thought we are, we've got an enemy yes. that, is, that, is, that is vastly ready. Yeah. I mean, he is always on the go. Yeah. I mentioned this morning in Sunday school. Uh, the, the things that, you know, uh, the way the enemy works. And, and the enemy, if he catch us off guard, then he's going to really come and attack. The things that happened in Pearl Harbor in 1942 would not have been near as devastating to the United States had we not had a bunch of uh, sailors sitting over on a bunch of boats all relaxed. Yeah, they were, they were soldiers, but they were, they, we weren't at war. They wasn't expecting an attack from the enemy, Brother Bill. And they, they were sitting over there and, and they were in a in a paradise. They were in, in Hawaii of all places. And, and they were getting leave to go into the islands and, and all of that. You know, and, and they, they weren't they weren't in war. But the enemy snuck in. Yeah. 
and caught them off guard. Right. And I thought the enemy would do us that way. And I thought the, uh, Nehemiah realized that, the, that he had enemies around and, and all the things was, that was going on. And, and they had free run of Jerusalem. And, and I thought the, 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 the sepulchres of his fathers, uh, that was his home place, homeland. His, his heart was there. And I thought he didn't want the enemy to have free cars with them. And I thought if we've got young people tonight, I thought it's bad enough to have an enemy that can attack them. But I thought when we leave our guard down and we let the enemy have an open run with our minds, I thought then what in the world do we think that we're going to, how do we think we're going to keep them? Right. I thought I, I've done everything that I possibly could, Brother David, to keep mine in the house of God and I've lost one. And I thought, how in the world do you think you're going to keep yours in the house of God when you're sitting idly by and you're not doing nothing to change the tide of the enemy that's trying to destroy him? Oh, I thought, I want, to get, I want to get anxious of the things of this world that's going on around us. I look around and I see the, the things that's going on and, and, and how that our, uh, that our families are getting further and further away from God. Uh, I was talking to Steve and Michelle yesterday morning, I believe it was, and, and uh, they asked me if Kyle never got to come to church with us. And, and I said, well, they weren't going to church. And, uh, and, and he wasn't getting to go. And, you know, because they wouldn't let him come with us. They made him go with them. And I said, now they're not going nowhere. So at least he is getting to come. I said, you know, I, I, don't, want, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I said, I don't know if I, I, I would rather them. And then I said, well, you know, I, I, at least I've got him. To where I can bring him to the house of God on Sunday morning. Where he can hear the truth about what uh, about the word of God. And not being out there getting deceived by the other things of this world. Uh, because mom and dad have decided that they want to give up on God. And try a different route. And I thought, the, uh, so it's a critical thing that we're dealing with. But yet we're sitting idly by. Oh, God. Thinking we're going to keep ours. Oh, God. Oh, whenever we let down our guard. I thought this ain't going, I mean, I've got some notes in here, but I ain't even touched them. I thought we need to make sure that we're doing everything we can to change the tide. Right. Because the enemy is doing everything he can to get you and me and definitely our children. How long we're living in the time. It's not no time to let up. It's not no time at all to let up. I thought uh, we're living in a time when it seems that the church <laughs> is giving up and you see the enemy has come in and tore down the walls. He burnt the gates. And he just seemed like he's just storming. But oh, we can't not give up. No, we can't. I know, uh, <clears throat> I'm familiar with the church. And when I say this, some of you might connect to where the church is. But uh, for years they had, a, they had a good pastor. He's a good man. And, uh, but uh, worldliness had slipped, slipped into the church. And uh, some of the older ones just doing things that just went right. And, uh, but time went on, the pastor retired, and another young pastor came in, and, and uh, the first couple times I went, I thought, man, this is a worldly outfit. And, uh, and the, pre the pastor preaching. But the thing is, those old people had done got headlong, set in their way for David, and wouldn't nobody going to change them. I mean, they just, they, them women, they won't sit there with their, and old gray, I mean, they didn't turn gray, they turned blue. You know what I mean? I mean, they, they just had all of it right down pat. And, and I mean, they were just, they were me. And uh, but that young pastor come in and he, he preached to them. And he realized that that bunch of old people wasn't going to change. So he started working on his young people. And he began to preach to them. And he began to get them, let them get them a, get a desire for more of God. Yeah. And I thought those young people began to grab a hold of it. And they began to, uh, to seek God. They begin to get sanctified. And I thought you can go there tonight and, and there's still a few of them old people sitting over there and they're sitting in their same pew. They got the same dry look on their face. They ain't moved in probably 30 years. And I thought, well, you, you go in there and ain't a bunch of young people is, round, uh, is uh, wound up. They're on fire for God. And I thought they look like homeless people. And I thought the, uh, and, and I thought the thing is, is they have changed the tide. The little people are still coming. They're still sitting there. And, and they still say, God ain't moving. We don't feel God like we used to when everybody around them shout. Because somebody was willing to change the tide. Uh, my wife's got some family that lived in a different state. And, and uh, uh, they were going to a holiness church. And, and uh, they, they made mention one night, well, you go over there. There ain't nothing over there moving but all the young people. They don't let the old people do nothing no more. 
And uh, Brother Joe Mill Houston went there. And so, well, you know, dry roads were with us. And I thought, you would know where I don't care how old Brother Joe Mill was, he's going to move for God. The problem was she had sat there. She had got cold on God. And I thought she wasn't doing nothing. But somebody realized they had to change the time. They had to get moving for God. I thought, I want to be one that will change the time. I don't want the circumstances to control me. But I want to be able to, uh, through the help and grace of God, control the circumstances. <laughs> I said, this ain't went nothing like I thought it would. But I thought, I don't know exactly where this is going tonight. But I've got a pretty good idea. I mean, <clears throat> I'm here among us every week. But I thought somebody needs to take notice and realize that just because you think you've got it under control, you don't. But I thought if you want it under control, you give it to God. You let God take care of it. Nehemiah was heartbroken because of the circumstance and all the situation. I mean, it's devastating. But I thought Nehemiah knew that if he wanted to, to get things done, that he had to go before God. I thought uh, he had plenty of opposition. But the thing about it was he had a mind to work. Over in the book of uh, over chapter 4 and our verse 7 we can read it says but it came to pass when Sabbath, Tobiah and the Arabians and the Amalites and, and the the Ashdelites heard that the wall of Jerusalem was made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, that they were very wroth. You see, they had free, like I said a while ago, they had free run. They could go and come and do whatever they wanted to. So whenever the breaches began to stop up, the enemy was upset. So when you take a stand that you're going to do right for God, you're going to face some opposition. But I thought as long as you keep your hand in the hand of God, you can be victorious. You can overcome. I thought uh, uh, we're living in time. I say you don't have to go to church. Uh, you don't have to go to church every Sunday. You don't have to uh, to go and, and and get in and worship and and press and get in the service. And you don't have to do all of that. I thought it's necessary. It's necessary. I thought uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, we know this. It says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some, uh, some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yes. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But certain fearful looking for judgment and fury and indignation. Uh, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despises those law dies without mercy under two or three witnesses. Uh, of how much uh, sore punishment suppose ye shall he that though worthy who hath trodden under foot of the Son of Man and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Uh, <clears throat> For we know him that saith, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. And then it says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Amen. And, uh, and I want to, uh, you know, I don't want to forsake the assembling of myself together with the saints. Right. We listen to Brother... Uh, uh, what well, his name just left me. We was listening to last night. One had a heart attack last week. Uh, Brother Savage last night. And uh, he talked about some church down there around where he's at. They had a drive through window. As long as you drove through the window, paid your tithes, and he said, You can buy your cold beers, you head to the lake right there at the church. And I mean, that's the world we're living in. That's right. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm not familiar with it, but he sounded like he. He knew what he's talking about. And, uh, and I thought, uh, that's the world we're living in. But then the Bible says, for Satan up, they're sending ourselves together. But the last verse there that I read says, it's a fearful thing to 
fall in the hands of a living God. I thought if we get ourselves in the way so much that God can't do nothing with us and he can't do nothing around us because we're in the way, I thought we'll fall into the hands of a mighty God. And I thought I don't want to be in the way. I thought, but I want to do what I can to change the tide. I thought whenever everything around us seems like it's devastating, but I want to make sure that I'm doing everything to draw others closer to God. I thought it's, it's in the last couple, three years, the impact that the enemy has and the, and the, the pull that he has has become so much realer to me than it ever has. Right. Because I know how serious it is. And I know that he has no respect of persons. He don't care where he gets them from. He don't care if he gets them off the altar, off the piano, off the guitar. He don't care as long as he destroys them. That's right. And I thought he'll destroy yours. Just the same he would like to destroy mine. And I thought that we can do what's necessary. You know, we... Like I said, I don't have an explanation for it. But I do know that we can help change the tide right. rather than a step back and say, well, the gates is done broke down. There's nothing I can do about it. Oh, I don't know where my father lives. And uh, there's a, I believe it was last winter, maybe winter before last, guy drives a truck there on Charlie's on a Friday and I was at home. And he called me and he said, uh, uh, I just drove by your father-in-law's he said, across the bridge there in that bottom, where there ain't no fence, he said, there's a bunch of cows in it. And uh, my father was gone, and I called him. And uh, <clears throat> so I jumped the truck, went down there, pulled in, and I didn't recognize the cattle. And uh, I thought, well, them ain't, them ain't dirty cows. And I uh, looked up behind me, and here come a car pulling in. Guy got out, and he's an older guy, he come limping down through there. I said, all them your cows? Yeah, they're fine, them dads. They getting out every day, and uh, so we ran them down under the bridge, across. We walked all the way up across the creek, and uh, he said they know where they're going. I said, yeah. He said they getting out there every day. I said, well then why don't you fix the fence? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just uh, I mean Highway 52 is a busy road, and the cow gets out there, and, and the your cow, you are responsible for whatever it tears up. Right. And uh, but but you know he knew the breach was in the fence. And uh, he'd been down there every day for a week or so, running these cows back in. And uh, they just, he'd run them back in. And he said, well, I'm just, Dad's not able no more, and I'm not able. And, and uh, you know, and I've been trying to get that son-in-law of mine to come down. And, and I'm like, man, you've got enough money to, uh, you know, buy a half of that you know, hire somebody to do your fencing. But he wasn't worried about the breach. I thought a lot of times we do the same thing. Yeah. We're around you say, there's nothing I can do. My children are getting older. There's nothing. I thought we can still pray. That's right. I thought we can still take it before God. Yeah. And I thought when we're doing our best, they're going to take notice of it. They're going to do their best. I thought I know what it's like uh, to, to battle with teenagers. I, I, I mean, I've done raised too. And thank God I'm not raised. Uh, but uh, but I but I also know what it's like to, to come out here and, and, and battle with them and try to get them prayed through and. and <coughs> trying to keep them on the altar. And uh, my sister Lord, she's uh, she never gives me any trouble. But I thought, but but yet the enemy still battles her. Yes. Just like he did her brother. The enemy still battles her just like he did me. The enemy still battles her just like he has her mother. And I thought he's gonna battle yours just like he battles you. So why would you sit by and give him all the room? They come against the song tonight. Oh, God. I hope I'll help you. This has absolutely went nothing like I thought it might. I told Sister Kathy when I left, I'd sit down there and really didn't know what to do. I typed up a few notes and I really ain't even used them. And uh, it ain't no three, four point message, but it's a burden. And I thought I'd preach this with a burden tonight. Yeah. I'm going to change the tide. Don't yeah. sit and allow the enemy to have free course of yours. 
whenever you can take it before God and storm the gates of heaven. And I thought Nehemiah went before the king and all he wanted was permission. King, can I go and do all I can to just restore and take care of the things? And then he went on ahead and he said, and, and would you give me would you give me some letters that whenever I come to these other governors that I, that I won't have no problem that I can get on through? Come on. And then and then the one that's taking care of the kings for us. Come Would on. you write a letter to, so that I can have the, the materials? I mean, he didn't just get He got everything that he needed yeah. to take care of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everything that was necessary was there. He had the enemy out there. And he got his sword in his hand and got his trowel in the other hand. He went to work and, and he began to build the walls and, and fix the breaches and, and, and take care of the things around his house. Yes, sir. All because he fell on his face and he fasted and he prayed before God. Is that good a song tonight? <clears throat> you want to change the time? Or you want to just sit there and let the tides carry you out. <clears throat> Had that hurricane coming into Florida? And uh, <clears throat> took a phone and watched a little news clips. They get prepared for it. Well, Steve mentioned this morning the, the anchors. And they took those uh, fish boats and those uh, shrimp schooners and all that stuff. And they got them out in the middle of them bays and them harbors. They put them right in the middle of the water. And they ran a cable from one bank to the other. Why'd they do that? Because they didn't want the storm to bash it into the banks and destroy it. They could get it out in the middle of the water. And it would sit there and it could stay afloat. And, they, and it didn't get bashed up against the banks and destroy it. And I thought if we're not careful, we're playing so close to the edge. Ooh. That the storm is going to come up on us. That's right. It's going to bash us against the banks. Oh, God. It's going to be destroyed. That gives us a song. Let's pray. Oh, Thank you. 